Travis Stock Hill, Oscar Deutsch took over a cinema scheme designed by T.P. Bennett and Son. It was built and opened as an Odeon. This was a magnificent cinema and served as the leading Odeon in the London area until the opening of Leicester Square. The auditorium had a superbly designed fan-shaped layout with a series of parallel troughs of concealed lighting on the splay walls and ceiling that could be switched off in progression towards the screen to precede the parting of the curtains and the start of the program. The Odeon Barnet was also a cinema taken over during the course of construction and so it bears little relation to the circuit style. Designed by Edgar Simmons, it has changed little in these 1984 colour photographs except for the obtrusive addition of mini cinemas on the store's floor. The Odeon neon signs on the outside lasted in their original position until the summer of 1985 when they were taken down apparently because they were no longer safe electrically. The Odeon name has now been put on the light box along with the names of the films being shown. The Odeon theatre clock is still there, if not in working order. Welling's Odeon was the first to be designed for the circuit by George Coles. This rather undistinguished narrow auditorium has been used for bingo since 1960. Originally though, there was a line of lighting set in the centre of the ceiling going towards the proscenium arch, a device seen in many of Cole's later Odeons. Cole's also designed the Kenton Odeon, closed in 1961 and later demolished. that George Coles provided a strikingly modern exterior for the first time. This Odeon, on the outskirts of Hounslow, was also an early casualty of declining audiences. Even in 1985, the letters of the word Odeon remain attached to the side wall of the auditorium. It has had an interesting afterlife, being converted into a film studios for making shorts and commercials. At Worley in Birmingham came the Worley Cinema, with this dominating exterior designed by T. Cecil Howitt. The building was as impressive by night as by day. with its flat top, supported by short circular columns, became the most distinctive feature of the small group of cinemas that this architect designed for the circuit. The Worley Cinema was a project originated by other entrepreneurs and Oscar Deutsch became involved with the completion of the financial arrangements. The interior of the Worley was, unusually, a combined effort by two architectural practices. The well-known firm of Satchwell and Roberts worked with that of Harry Whedon, then an architect best known for housing and factories, who was represented by a young graduate, J. Cecil Clavering. Soon renamed Odeon, the Worley Cinema was later to become a bowling alley before being demolished in the early 70s.